Hello, welcome to an IV4 training video. We're going to be walking through how to set up the IV4 with a Siemens PLC for Profinet communication today. So, first off, we're starting here in our IV Smart Navigator software, uh, which we'll use to program the IV4 itself. There's one setting in here we have to make sure we change before we get started in TIA Portal, which is how we're going interfa to interface with the PLC. So, First, you're going to go to Sensor Advanced. In your IV4, you go to this Utility tab and the FieldNet slash Communication Unit DL settings. Um, now, here you'll see I already have mine set to Profinet. By default, your IV4 should come as disabled. So you're going to want to make sure you go there, select Profinet, keep Handshake Control disabled, and keep Byte Swap disabled, unless you're going to be doing some OCR stuff and you want to send strings back to the PLC from red text, something like that then you probably want to enable it, but in our case, we'll just disable it. You also need to give your IV4 a Profinet device name. Um, you can name it whatever, I just named it IV4-G500CA, which is the model of camera that I'm working with today. Um, the important thing here is you actually have to make sure all these letters are undercase, or uh, not capitalized. It will not accept capital letters in Profinet. So, Profinet, we're all good. If you're setting that for the first time, it's going to have you restart the sensor so it'll just do a quick reboot and then you'll reconnect to it. Um, another important thing to note here before we switch over to TIA portal is to keep track of our network settings, our IP address specifically. Uh, 172.19.102.51 is what I have mine at. You can set whatever you want but it's going to be important when we set up communication between the PLC and the IV4 later on. So I'll throw this into a run mode. You see we got a program here, just a simple dummy program to show you guys. And now let's go over to Siemens here, to the TIA portal software that we have. And we're going to create a whole new project for this. And I'm going to call this IV4 Setup. Looks good. We'll hit Create. And give it just a sec. We'll take just a moment to put everything together over in the TIA portal software. So we'll let this load. Okay, now that's perfect. Let's just go straight into the project view. This is kind of how I like to do it. And once we're in our project view, we could, you see we have kind of a blank project here. So we're going to first add a new device. And this new device that we're adding is going to be our PLC. We're going to have to add both the PLC and the IV4. So my model is an S7-1500. This will work for any of the models that are compatible, 1200, 1500 works. Um, my particular model is a 1511-1PN, and it will actually be this AK02. Um, the version looks good, and we'll hit OK. We're just adding it in. Uh, you can find the actual model number of your PLC. If you're using a Siemens PLC, it's going to be on the face of it there. So you can just take a look at the actual physical PLC itself to verify the name and model number of the PLC you'll be using. So we'll let it load. It's loading in the PLC itself here, and now it's going to show us, yep, that looks about right. Okay. So that's looking good. From here, we'll want to do one thing. So I'll go to Network View and kind of show you this. The Network View screen is very nice because it shows us all our devices all together. I'm going to go to Properties. This is the properties of the PLC we have selected here. And it's going to take us immediately to this Ethernet addresses sort of subcategory. You'll see the subnet is not networked. We're going to need to add a new subnet. The other thing we want to change here is the IP address of the actual PLC itself. So our IV4 had an IP address of 172, I want to say 19. Let's double check. Yep, 19102.51. So We'll want to make this IP address of our PLC something like 102.52. I'm going to do 5.8 just because I think I have another device on the network there. So 5.8 I know will be safe. Let's do actually 5.9 just to be super super safe. All right. That looks good. And from here, our PLC settings are pretty much all set up. Uh, our PLC is added into our project. So now all we have to do is add our, our IV4. So to do this, you'll go to Options, kind of Manage General Station Description Files. 
And you'll see I've actually already imported my uh, IV4 GSDML file. Uh, what's nice with the IV4 now is when you actually install IV Smart Navigator or software to use this, you can see where I get my source path from. This will be C Drive, Program Files, Keyants, IV Smart Navigator, and then in this Profinet folder, you can't see it here because we're selecting a folder. But the contents of that folder contains this GSDML file for the Keyants IV4. So you can just use that. It's going to already be on your computer if you have the software installed. I've already installed mine, but if you need to do that, you'll just hit install and it'll say successful. Should be no problems with that. So hit cancel here. Now, what I can do is actually drag in a new device to this, which is what I want to do here. So we'll go to device view, network view. We want to be able to see the network view, libraries, hardware catalog. That's the one. I'll drag this out so you can see this a bit. We're going to go down to other field devices, Profinet IO, and sensors. You'll see Keyance Corporation, so got a good idea where we're going. Vision sensors, obviously the IV4 is a vision sensor, and you can see I have the old IV3 one loaded in, and the IV4. So this is where, if you ever install a GSD file, the device that you installed will show up here, and you're able to just click and drag it into our network. Perfect. Okay, so now the IV's there. What I'm going to do is actually drag, click and drag from this node to here, which will let the software, the PLC program we're creating, know that these two are linked. Uh, as, as you can see, this kind of matches up to the actual configuration I have here, where I have both devices on the same network, just connected by a simple Ethernet switch. So, now I'm going to double-click IV. There's just a couple settings we want to make sure we have set here. Uh, first off, you don't want to set the IP address in the project. Our IP address is already set on the IV4, so we already set that. We're good. Uh, we do not want to generate our Profinet device name automatically. We want to make this match that device name that we set up over in the IV Smart Navigator software. So that looks good. Should match up directly. And everything else should be good. General is the interface. Yep, this all looks good to me. All right. Now, you'll see when we loaded in our IV4, we actually have all of these different sort of organizations, categories of bits here. We have our command control, which is in our queue address for our outputs, 0 to 103, and everything else is going to be inputs. So command status bits, device status words, etc. These are going to take up, take up a, a good amount, a good chunk of space in there in your addresses. But if you're confused at all about what these are, wondering what these do, I'd strongly urge you to go check out the IV4 user's manual. In chapter 9, uh, it covers a lot of the Profinet specifications and maps out the actual data allocation. So, as you can see here, I'll put this here. Command control uh, is all everything we can send from the PLC to the IV4. So, you see this is addresses 0 through 103. This matches up right with our queue addresses there. Oh, excuse me, on the uh, PLC there that has been set up. So to actually show some communication, I'm going to add a couple tags here in a second before we go online, so that when we go online, you'll see that these are responding to the actual uh, information the camera's sending back. So let's go back into our PLC now for a moment. Uh, let's go to the network view. You can see that's all set up. What I'm going to do is create a couple tags in the PLC just in the let's make a new watch table so we can actually look at the bits change once we get connected so when you're adding a new tag in here you'll just want to make sure you reference the user's manual and how these bits are laid out so these are all of our inputs from the IV4 back to the PLC so these are all those I addresses um, so I0 0.0, that's a trigger response that'll come back every time you send a trigger, etc. I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab our total status OK and our total overall judgment no good. Um, these are sort of opposing bits, right? So one will be on when the camera gives you an OK judgment, the other when it gives a no good. So the inputs are actually a little bit, it's a little bit slightly confusing on the addresses. So these are 0, 1, 2, 3. In the PLC, this is actually going to be 4. So you got to keep track of that when you actually import your GSD file and create the IV4 as a module in there. So we're going to be looking at bits 4.0 and 4.6. So I'll add these in, let's say, 
uh, total stat uh, status okay and this will have an actual and a oh excuse me I forgot I can't just add these in we're gonna actually have to create those in our regular PLC tags so we'll go to PLC tags go to the default tag table create this so total status okay the data type will be a boolean that's right and it's actually input uh, 4.0 so i4.0 which again lines up with it's the fourth row of addresses and it's the bit zero so we'll just do the same for a total status no good boolean data type of course and we're just going to give this an address of 4.6 great I'm going to copy these over into that watch table we made so that we can watch the bits change once we get connected and then I'll show you how we get all connected here so we'll right click this hit compile hardware and software only changes what I'll select All right, now those changes have been applied. We're just going to do one more thing. We're going to right click this and we're going to download all the changes we made to the device. So this is where we're actually establishing that communication between our PC running the PLC software and the actual physical PLC hardware itself. So we're going to scan, take a look through. You see it's already found the PLC and the IV4 on there. We're going to actually want to load all these settings we changed into the PLC. So it's going to change the address there. I had it at 52, so we're going to change it now. So let's load this in. You can see it should load with this 59 IP now. All right. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so it looks like we had some stuff in there before, so we'll just load this straight on there, and that should be okay. It should override it to a degree. All right, and now I think that's finished there. So we can actually go online. Before we go online, we can go do this so that we can kind of see both devices here and you'll get to take a look at how this all works so we'll let this run now so you see we're getting an okay judgment i'm gonna have us close this testing tab so we can actually see these monitor values and we're going to go online with this so now you should see a bunch of green x or green check marks there some green dots Perfect. This is telling us that it has found our IV4 and the PLC and everything's communicating normally. So I'm going to turn this monitor on so you can see right now our total status no good is actually true, which is a little strange. Uh, you know what it is? My PLC is in stop mode. Make sure you turn your PLC to run and there you go. Now it should be matching. <laughs> Sorry, I had to click it physically there. Um, Sometimes that's often the issue if you're troubleshooting PLC stuff. So there you go. It's all true. Okay. And then when I put my hand over it, that's no good. So the value is always going to be one or the other. If I take this out, it's no good. Put it back, finds it. It's all true on the okay bit. So that has been establishing communication between IV4 and a Siemens PLC over Profinet. Please stay tuned for future videos where we'll be talking about creating some function blocks to trigger programs, change the camera, and a bunch of other good stuff. All right, have a great day.